Right now in the Valley today at 6 a.m., charges officially filed against two people after a toddler overdosed on fentanyl in Jamestown, what police are saying. And the city of Moorhead breaking ground on the new community center and library. Hear what officials are saying about that project also coming up. Plus, meteorologist Lisa Green joining us with a look at our forecast on our Thursday, June 6, 2024. The Valley Today at 6 a.m. starts right now. This is the Valley Today. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for waking up and joining us at 6 a.m. here on the Valley today. My name is Ashlyn Hill and I'm Alex Larson. And of course, we got meteorologist yes. Lisa Green here with us this morning. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Who? <laughs> <laughs> We've, Lots got, we've going got some on things to go over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, heavy rain the last couple of days. We've got river levels on the rise right. that we'll be checking in on too. But the, I think the big thing that everybody was talking about yesterday was the wind. Mm -hmm. That was a big issue. We had wind that caused uh, issues on the roadways as far as, you know, high profile vehicles having some trouble with it. But you can see in this photo here, we also had blowing dust. And that's a concern again for today, which I find interesting because we've had so much rain lately. A lot of that concern that we were having earlier on in the spring with the dry dirt out there uh, has been alleviated somewhat, but there is still some of that to work with. And that's just how strong the wind was yesterday. And this is our photo that we got uh, from Lisa, who shared this picture from along Highway 46 in the Sheldon Corner area, that blowing dust and dirt that was still going on at the surface and a visibility, of course, affected by that. And this is just how strong the wind was. We are looking at peak winds that surpassed 50 miles per hour in many spots. One I want to point out here, 59 mile per hour wind gusts in Rolla. If that had been clocked in a thunderstorm, it would have been raised up to a severe would be issued because that's how intense those winds are. They can be damaging at 59 miles per hour there. That was the peak. We saw 50s on both sides of the Red River. Monoman got to 53 miles per hour, a gust of 54 in Carrington and in Oaks, some 40s for Fargo and in Grand Forks. And we may see more 40 to 50 mile per hour winds today. We've got a wind advisory taking effect at 8 a.m. through 8 p.m. For gusts that once again, more likely to stay in the 40s, but they could reach up to 50 miles per hour in some of the same areas that were under that advisory yesterday. Here's a look at our current wind speeds and gusts. You can see that it's already breezy, not as intense as yesterday, but still getting some gusts this morning in the 30s in Devil's Lake, Jamestown, Sisseton, a gust to 32 miles per hour there. So it's already started. It will get stronger as that sun uh, continues to rise and warms us up here through the day and gets that air moving more. And looking at our radar and satellite map, we've got some clouds in the north and east, some sun in the south and west, and a little bit of shower activity too. Can't rule that out today. Temperatures currently in the 50s. It's 56 in Grand Forks, 57 in Fargo. Here's a look at our planner. It's going to be windy all day. Our sky cover is going to be varying in Fargo between partly cloudy to mostly cloudy conditions. Temperatures getting into the low 70s coming up for this afternoon for Fargo. If you're in the northeast, northwestern parts of Minnesota, uh, that's where we're going to have the cloud cover just kind of hanging around all day. And that could keep our temperatures quite cool. We're going to talk more about that and how our rain chances are faring right now. I know a lot of us want a break. That's also been a big topic of conversation. When's it going to stop raining? But we'll let you know coming up here in your extended planner in just a couple of minutes. All right. Thank you, Lisa, for the update. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. The Trump campaign requesting vetting documents from Governor Doug Burgum and other potential vice presidential contenders yesterday. Trump's campaign reportedly also requesting documents from Florida Senator Marco Rubio, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Over the past few weeks, though, Burgum has been attending campaign events with the former president, speaking on major news outlets, and was with Trump on the day of the hush money trial verdict. We reached out to Burgum's team for a quote, but have not heard back. Two people have been arrested now and charged in Stutzman County after their young daughter overdosed on drugs. The two-year-old was given two doses of Narcan before regaining consciousness. Christopher Johnson and Rhiannon Huffstetler are both facing felony charges after officers say the pair admitted they had meth and fentanyl in the house and had both used that day. The woman said she overdosed that morning and was given Narcan by Johnson. Video surveillance shows Johnson pass out after taking fentanyl with a syringe in the kitchen. That child was found unconscious on the kitchen counter. We're still learning more about that crash near the Grand Forks Airport that happened Monday night. Court documents show the man arrested was drinking before that crash. 
Travis Bell is charged with two counts of criminal vehicular injury after rear-ending an SUV, seriously injuring a 26-year-old woman and a 6-year-old child. According to court documents, Bell told the trooper he thought he had a green light but didn't remember much from the scene. The trooper says he had watery eyes and once he got out of the vehicle, he could smell a strong odor of alcohol. A breathalyzer result came back at 0.13%. And a man is facing charges after allegedly pepper spraying someone during his mother's breakup. 21 year old Damien Stash is charged with a felony count of using tear gas to immobilize. This happened around 7 p.m. on Sunday. A man and woman were in the midst of a breakup when the victim was helping the man move his belongings out of an apartment. According to court documents, Stash, the woman's son, hit him in the face and pepper sprayed him. Happening today, the Moorhead Police Department says the Red River Valley SWAT team will be training on the Concordia campus. This is happening near 8th Street and 12th Avenue South. Officials say SWAT team members will be on campus from 3 to 8. Police vehicles will be present with their emergency lights activated and law enforcement will have firearms, but no live rounds will be used. As a reminder, this is just a training. It's not open to the public. And the city of Moorhead is preparing for another long-term construction project. The city leaders broke ground on the new community center and library yesterday. Yeah, big day. The future site is along Center Avenue, just next to the Moorhead Center Mall. Now, this is a project that has been three years in the making so far, and it's already a busy time in Moorhead. They already have construction related to bringing down the old mall and building the underpass project. But Mayor Shelley Carlson says this will all be worth it for everyone of every age in our community. And we're going to embrace um, all generations to be able to come in and hang out here and read and listen to different speakers and um, just be part of the city of Moorhead. Construction on the new facility is set to wrap up in the summer of 2026. Again, the city acknowledges the amount of construction projects going on in Moorhead currently, and they're offering you a time to come to them with any questions. That's happening today from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Head on over to the Yomcom Center for coffee and construction. There you can meet with project team members and learn about the progress. These meetings are happening every month. Upcoming dates after today are July 11th and August 1st. Traffic alert for drivers in Fargo today. Starting at 8 a.m., the southbound lanes of 42nd Street South between 37th Avenue South and 44th Avenue South will come to a close. One lane of traffic on 42nd Street South will be maintained in each direction throughout this closure, though. And 40th Avenue South will close to traffic between 42nd and a half Street South and 42nd Street South. Eastbound traffic will be detoured to 44th Avenue through 45th Street. Westbound traffic will be detoured to 45th Street through 44th Avenue. The road is expected to fully reopen by the end of the day. Monday, June 10th, the lane closures will allow for asphalt surface repairs to be completed.